Let's say we did a survey at an elementary school and we measured the height of the kids and look at their ages. If you graph this, uh, you'd, get, you'd expect that the younger kids would tend to be shorter and the older kids would tend to be taller. But you're going to get um, uh, data that's really all over the place. Um, you're going to have some short people that are older and some tall kids that are younger and so forth. And so the question is, is this a linear relationship? Well, um, uh, there is a trend here. You'd sort of tend to draw a line at this angle through the data. And in fact, if you uh, plug this data into a regression formula, you'd get a straight line. And it might look something like this. Okay. And so the question is, uh, how good a fit is that? Is that how reasonable is it to say this is a linear relationship at all? There's a statistical quantity that's designed to try to indicate how much um, correlation there is between these two quantities, and that's called the correlation coefficient. And we use that the letter is R. And there's a, a related uh, statistic called R squared. And for some formulas, they use R squared, and some formulas, they use R. So the way it works is this. If this is just totally random, it's just scattered all over the map here and there's no real linear relationship at all, we would say the correlation is zero. Okay. If it's just a flat relationship, if, it, if the regression line were just a horizontal line, it would come out zero uh, as well because uh, the height in that case would be the same regardless of age. Okay. That's not what we expect in this particular case, but if you had a two quantities and it was just a horizontal line, it indicates as this varies, this one doesn't change at all, so there's really no correlation between what's happening here and what's happening here. Okay, so if there's a positive trend, as one gets larger, the other also gets larger. Or if there's a negative trend, as one thing gets larger, the other thing gets smaller, so it would go this way. Okay we can say there would be a positive correlation in this direction or a negative correlation in this direction. If they lined up perfectly in a straight line at a positive slope like this, the correlation coefficient would come out 1. And if they lined up perfectly in a straight line with a negative slope, it would be negative 1. Okay, so it's a little bit of a strange measurement here because it's not just saying how linear is it? Because there are some lines for which it comes out zero, namely a horizontal line. So that doesn't work. But on the other hand, uh, for the purposes for which this was designed, uh, it's an indicator of uh, whether there is a relationship between these two uh, quantities and whether it's a positive trend or a negative trend kind of a relation. And the closer to one, the stronger the relationship. Okay. So let's go about seeing how to calculate this, the way this was defined. So this is a made-up number uh, that's designed to give an indication of this uh, property. So uh, have a little bit of patience with this, okay? First thing we do is you take the average of all the y values, and we basically, if you put a horizontal line through here so that this splits the data uh, exactly in the middle vertically, okay? Then, the, how far off each data point is from uh, this mean value of y. So the value of y here would be called y bar. Okay, the bar indicates a mean or an average. Okay, and so this would be called a deviation. If we take the sum of the squares of the deviations, we get a number uh, just by taking all of these vertical gaps between uh, each data item and the average value of y. And we, we square those and add them together. And that's going to be what we just call the sum of the squares of the deviations. Next thing we do is we put a regression line through it. Let me change colors here. So for the regression line, we look at these little gaps like this, and we call those residuals. Okay, that's a residual there. Okay, 
And if you take the sum of the squares of the residuals, so if the data has sort of a linear trend to it, using the regression line rather than just a horizontal line should improve the situation. The residuals ought to be smaller than the deviations, or at least the sum of the squares of the residuals should be smaller than the sum of the square of the deviations. And the more, the more that's the case, the more um, linear the data is. If it's just random, putting a, a slanted line through there shouldn't really improve it any compared to a horizontal line. But if we uh, put the best fit line through and compare that to a horizontal line, uh, then if the data is very linear, then it should, um, this should be small compared to that. We can then calculate R squared is defined as 1 minus the sum of the squares of the residuals over the sum of the squares of the deviations. Okay. And then take the square root and that gives us R, the correlation coefficient. Okay. So that's the process. We're basically saying if we put a regression line through the data, is that going to be an improvement over just putting a horizontal line through the data? Okay. And sort of the fractional improvement. If I look at SSR over SSD, it's like, what if this is a small number compared to a large number? This would be tiny. And so 1 minus a tiny number would be close to 1, and that would give us a correlation that's high. However, if SSR is really hardly any different from SSD, then you have essentially equal quantities here, which is close to 1, and 1 minus 1 is 0. You get no correlation. So this, this is a designed to be a statistical measure that will tell us uh, how clustered the data is near some kind of a line, and so that using that line would improve our residuals. Okay, a lot of computational tools, whether you have a scientific calculator or uh, use GeoGebra or a spreadsheet, you can get uh, these uh, types of statistics uh, generated automatically for you. Let's first of all uh, do it in a semi-manual manner using GeoGebra, and then from there uh, let's see how to get, get these numbers if you need them uh, directly from the program. Okay, I've opened up GeoGebra with the same data set we were using on the problem in the previous section. So here you are with how many days since you had some surgery and how many sit-ups you're able to do. So let's, let's do this. Uh, if I select this data and I come over to the list function and create a list of points and say create. Now I'm going to uh, turn off the spreadsheet view for a minute. And notice I don't see anything because uh, the data is too big. And in fact, uh, the data is pretty steep here, and so rather than just uh, expand the whole thing, what I'm going to do is, uh, let's move this over a little bit. If we have this move tool selected, I can actually grab the arrowhead on the axis and pull it down, and so that flattens it down a bit, so it changes this scale compared to this scale, okay? And now if I enlarge the view, I can get it so it fits nicely, okay? so. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to put a regression line through the data. Here's our list of points over here. This is our list of points. Uh, the ordered pairs coincide with these points. Okay. So there's a number of ways of putting your regression line through there. Let's do it like this. I'm going to say f of x equals, and I say fit, and if I choose the where it says fit line, and then it says list of points. So I put the name of this list, which is list one. And there's the regression line. Okay. Um, there's another quantity we're going to want, which is the mean. We can do this in the spreadsheet view, but uh, we can do it here as well. So I'm just going to create something which is the mean y value. So we're going to want to put this horizontal line through here to calculate the correlation, how how clustered is this data around this line compared to just an arbitrary line or a horizontal line, okay? So let's uh, call this m of the y values, mean of the y's, looks like my 
equals, and if I start by typing mean, uh, it's below your screen, but it's, it's here, it says mean y list of points, and put the list of points in there. And notice it gave the mean y value is 16. Let's go ahead and draw that on here. If I just do the line that says y is equal to my, uh, that's going to be uh, a horizontal line equal to this mean value here. Okay, So the deviations, as we're calling them, are how far all these points are from the horizontal line. The residuals are how far all these points are from the best fit line. Okay, And what we're going to try and do is to see how much improvement there was by using the best fit line. Um, and the idea is if they're total scatter, then putting a best fit, whatever that means, isn't really going to improve it that much. Okay, So it would be indicated by this correlation coefficient. Okay, let's go back to the spreadsheet view. Now, we could actually uh, just have GeoGebra calculate these for us, but the first thing I'd like to do is to do this in a semi um manual manner, the way the book is doing it. Uh, what the book does is it says, okay, this is example one in the book. Uh, first thing is we want to say how far are each of these y values from the mean value. So let's, uh, we can use my from this other view here as a quantity here. So if I say equals this minus my, uh, that tells how far this is from that value. And if I drag it down, it tells how far all of these are from that value. Let's go back and look at the graphics view for a minute. Notice the first value says was minus 8. And so A here, this is from about 8 to about 16. So that looks like it's about minus 8. That looks reasonable. Okay. So the second thing we want to find is how far are each of these values here from the actual line, a vertical distance to the regression line. So what we need to do is find the points at these same x values. What are the actual points that are on the line? These are the x, y values from the actual data. I'd like a set of y values that are uh, function values at these values of x. So what I can say here is equals, I'm just going to generate uh, the function values here. I'm going to say f of x, and for the x I'm going to click this, and that will give the y value on the line itself for that particular x value. Okay. Now I can say equals, what's the difference between this value and say, minus that? Okay, so the residuals are given here, and the deviations are given here. Let's add a line in here. Let's insert above here. I'm going to call this one residuals. And this one is going to be our deviations. Okay. This was actually the y values on the line. This is what the book called y hat. All right. Um, and this was the actual x's and y's. I'm going to put a little uh, quote mark there because I discovered if I just type x that has some special meaning here. So I'm going to say x and this was uh, y. Okay, so x's and y's, that's our actual raw data. Here's the deviation uh, from the mean. Uh, here is the residual from the line. Now what we're interested in doing is getting the deviations squared and the residuals squared. We want the sum of the squares of the deviations and the sum of the squares of the residuals. Let's uh, insert a column here. Okay, and so here I'm going to take, I'm going to say equals this number squared. And let's copy that down. And notice that whereas the deviations were some positive, some negative, of course, when I square it, they all come out positive. Let's shrink these down a little bit so we can see them. Okay, let's just call it uh, ds. That's the deviation squared. 
let's call this one RS, but notice that has a special meaning, so I'm going to put a little uh, text marker in there. If I start it with a quote mark, a single quote, it, it just interprets this as text, not some kind of a function or something. All right? That's what I did over here for X also. Okay. Uh, the residual squared, this would equal this residual squared. There we go. All right. Now, what I want is the sum of the squares of the deviations. So I'm going to type SSD and the sum of the squares of the res residuals, SSR. Okay. And so this number is going to be equal to the sum, and then use parentheses and sweep over these. It's 194. This is going to be equal to the sum, use parentheses, of these. Okay. A lot of these are ordinary spreadsheet types of operations. Okay. By definition, r squared, r squared, uh, I just type that in like text, it looks like it's going to accept that all right. And that's going to be equal to, let's put a little equal sign after it, and put it right here. Okay, so r squared is going to be, start with an equals in the, in the cell, 1 minus that divided by that. Okay, and let's see if we have, and then uh, simply r uh, space equals, that's just a label again, equals sqrt of that. Okay, let's get these with better precision. Let's say options, rounding, let's say four decimal places. There we go. All right, so um, the correlation coefficient is 95% uh, or 0.95, and uh, R squared would be 0 .9, 0 .90, 0 0.91, something like that. Okay, so anytime you're up close to one, that means it's close to a uh, straight line. And uh, the, if you're close to zero, it means uh, there's no correlation. And if it has a negative slope to it, it'll come out negative here. But again, close to negative one is uh, nearly straight in the, with a negative relationship. Okay, let's see how to get these same values simply from um, uh, the GeoGebra as a tool. Okay, so what I can do is I can highlight these and go over here to where it says two variable regression analysis and there we have it this shows a scatter plot like we did on the straight graphics view the regression model is linear okay in fact here it gives the equation of the line which you might recognize for options um, uh, let's see let's show the data and let's show the statistics Okay, so let's see what all uh, it tells us here. Uh, first, we have the equation of the regression line. Over here is the r, the correlation coefficient, which is 0.9536. Here's r squared, which is 0.909. Um, our mean y value was 16. The mean x value was 6. We didn't look for that. And a bunch of other information here. Um, and so forth. So there's a lot more information here than we really want, but on the other hand, it gives us the things we were looking for. Here's the correlation coefficient, and this one is called a coefficient of determination, which is simply r squared, and the equation of the line. It also has this feature, if I put in a particular x, it'll predict the corresponding value of y that is on the line. So like, what if I put in 4.5 here, or say 5, here's 4, 6, 8. So what if I put in 5? I would expect to get something in the ballpark of maybe 14-ish, I'm guessing. Let's see. So if I put in 5 and then hit enter, and it comes out 13.9, which is the prediction. So for any given value of x, it will give you the corresponding value of y. 
Okay, this is uh, the reason we did it manually here or semi-manually using just the spreadsheet functions to calculate it for us uh, is just so that you get an idea of where these numbers come from. You should be able to get these same results using a spreadsheet, a regular spreadsheet, or a scientific calculator as well. So get to know your tools, and as the tools evolve, um, you should grow along with them. By the way, the, uh, just a comment on this whole use of technology in teaching here. Uh, the technology that's available at this moment as I speak is not the technology that's going to be available a few years down the line. Uh, presumably it will uh, have improved. So uh, this is uh, encouraging you to use the technology that's available and as time goes on uh, you should try and stay up with uh, the changes and experiment on your own. But knowing how to uh, work with some of this technology now uh, would hopefully make it easier for you to learn um, new variations down the line. Okay.